appealing to you. Now, you know if these promises are very appealing to you. And if they are, now how much confidence can you have towards God that he's going to deliver you safe to the presence of God, faultless, faultless in his presence? Oh, see, this, is, this is a great confidence builder. The promises of God, in order for them to be accomplished, requires Jesus to be present at all times. At all times. Never can Jesus be absent and, and a promise be fulfilled. It can't happen. All the fullness is in him. He's handed the kingdom over to God. And in the end, Jesus is going to hand the kingdom back up to the Father. He's going to say, see, here am I and the children. We're all here. They're all spotless. I've trained every one of them. Han personally trained every one of them. We're ready now for part two or whatever it is. Get on with eternity, Father. Because now we've got this group of, 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 of personalities that I've personally purged. They're ready now. Yeah. Made them ready now. We can enter right in. Amen. Whatever you work. See, Jesus knows what the work is. Yeah. Jesus, well, I don't know what the work is, what part two is going to be. Jesus knows, and he's making us all ready. Amen. On that day, we'll enter right into it, and we'll say, I had an inclination it was something like this. We'll just enter right into the work. We'll put our hand right to the work. Amen. What happened? These eternal, these exceeding great and precious promises, they did what God gave them to do. Amen. They created in us such a desire that we cast off the works of darkness and we put on the armor of light and we ran the race to the end and, and now we're usable in the hands yeah. of a fit God. Amen. Jesus is required all of the time. Jesus is not a part-time savior, never has been a part-time savior, never will be. In the ages to come, Jesus is not going to be asked to stand aside. Now, you've got all the work done, now you stand aside. He's going to be our great captain. He's going to lead us. See, God's going to dwell with us then. Not, then it's going to be face to face. Not through an angel. Not through another man. Face to face then. What does that require? Exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might be partaker of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. So at some point in time in all of us, the lust for other things began to diminish. Peter's saying it happens when the promises are more, you place more value on what God said than what men said. You place more value on what God's promised than what Satan's promised. When that occurs, you overcome. Right at that moment, but not until that moment. No one overcomes when they're half-hearted. Amen. No one. See, it's, it's just built into this thing. It's built into it. If you seek God with your whole heart, then you'll find him. What good is a promise? What good is a promise if the one that it's promised to never responds? I can promise you all day long something, but if you won't listen to me, if you're a backward and a forward people, what good is a promise? It's not going to help you. You won't, even, you won't even know when, when your trouble comes. But see, to those who have given their ear, inclined their ear to God, see, when he, when he promises something, they start counting on it. Amen. Yeah. See, now this, now this changes everything. This changes, when you start counting on God, now the scenario changes. See, if you live your life just at random, just hit and miss, there's a lot of bumps on that road. But when you start counting on God, when you, everything is, is, is if the Lord wills, if, if the Lord wants me to do it. When you, see, it starts, you start changing the way you talk. Like, well, I'm going to go and do this if the Lord allows me to live. What happened? God got into this scenario. God got into your life, and now you saw that unless he wants me to do it, I don't want to do it anyway. Remember Moses said, I'm not going to go if you don't go with us. I don't even want to go. Remember the, 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 the one man told Deborah the same thing. I'm not going to go unless you go. I won't do it. Now, see, when you say I'm not, I, when, this, when you, from the heart, 
This is your reaction to God. I, I don't want to do it without you. What happened? Things changed. All of a sudden, the promises, they became more than just a I hope so. They became a I'm looking forward to. This is this has caught my imagination now. I find myself sitting thinking about the day when I'm going to have the crown of righteousness. I, I can't help but think about it. Why? Because you've already died to this world. And your life is hid with Christ and God. And now the things that he promised, they become your reality. They really are real. On that day, the things that he promised, when you start with, when you actually have them in your hand, see, because you hoped for them, because they were your meditation day and night, they've readied you to wield them or to use them or to become that for them to be really yours. Yeah. These promises were a prelude to glory. I mean, the glory of them are, is great here. How much more when you actually have eternal life? I mean, talking about it's one thing. Entering into it takes, you got to lay down your life. But the attainment of it, see, this is going to be glorious to God when his saints take the kingdom and all the promises are fulfilled. 100 percent well this is a glorious time Amen. just the contemplation of it will ready you to say no to sin and yes to righteousness he just contemplating it how much more the reality when he says all right now you take the kingdom be over 10 cities this is a glorious moment this is what it's all been to this time when the saints take the kingdom Amen. well For now, we give ourselves to the promises that, that are accessible right now. This is what we give ourselves to. He's given us some things. He's given us power that we might be able to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. This is what, yeah. this is what the saints ain't major on this. Can you imagine a church that doesn't deny ungodliness and worldly lust? Well, it's a Babylonian church. How about this? I can give all diligence. That's what I can do. I, I can major on giving all diligence. Why? Because, because God's behind this. How about this? You know, I, I, I'd like to be known for this. Making your calling an election sure. Yeah. Hey, think, think about this. You can put that on my tombstone. He made his calling an election sure. See, the world, they may despise some of these things, but this is what their, their promises produce. And if it hasn't produced this, then they haven't been seen for what they really are. And if they're seen, you'll deny ungodliness. Nobody will have to ask you to do it. Nobody will have to say, Brother Bob, you need to start denying ungodliness. If I see the promise of God right, I'll deny ungodliness. I'll do it. Until then, it's just a whole bunch of words anyway. But as soon as you see it rightly, he's got your name written on it. He's promised to give you a new name. Well, I hope the brethren were edified with that.